Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian with the Ohio University Math Department in Athens, Ohio. In previous videos, we discussed various theorems about congruent objects, congruent parts of triangles, congruent parts of quadrilaterals. But in the, the previous video, I introduced the, the neutral exterior angle theorem, which is a theorem about bigger and smaller parts of, of triangles. And in this video, we'll continue a discussion of bigger and smaller parts of triangles. And the things that we'll be discussing in this video are consequences of that one theorem, the neutral exterior angle theorem. So that's a very fun uh, collection of, of consequences that are all made possible by that one theorem that was introduced in the previous video. So the uh, consequences we'll, we'll be talking about are four consequences. Uh, the side angle side, I'm sorry, the side angle angle theorem, uh, the BS arrow BA theorem, the BA arrow BS theorem, and the triangle inequality of neutral geometry. This material is from section 6.3 of the book uh, a geometry, a metric approach with models by Millman and Parker. Uh, those pages are actually incorrect. I think that the uh, the pages are later. Let me look that up. Yeah, so pages um, 138 to 140 of section 6.3. The su suggested exercises from this section of the book are uh, this collection of seven exercises, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 10 from section 6.3. We're going to use some um, theorems about congruent parts of triangles from previous sections of the book. From section 6.1, we had the um, isosceles triangle theorem, or more easily remembered as the CS arrow CA theorem. It says, in a triangle, if you have two congruent sides, then you have two congruent angles opposite those sides. From uh, section 6.2 of the book, we have the, a theorem that's the converse of the statement of that previous theorem. Remember that when you have a, a theorem that is a, a conditional statement, if hypothesis then conclusion, then the, the contrapositive of that statement is automatically true. But the converse of that statement is not automatically true. If the converse of the statement is true, then it amounts to a, a new theorem. And so that's what we've got here. We've got a, a new theorem that says um, in a triangle, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So if CA, then CS. See, here we have congruent angles, and here we have congruent sides opposite those angles. Now recall the neutral exterior angle theorem, which was discussed in the previous video. Uh, we introduced the, the, the term an exterior angle. So uh, in this triangle, uh, angle BCD is an exterior angle. And the two angles uh, ABC, that's this angle, and BAC, that's this angle, are remote interior angles for that exterior angle. And the exterior angle theorem says this, that the measure of an exterior angle is greater than the measure of either of its remote interior angles. So in these diagrams, this red angle is big, and this green angle is small. And in this diagram over here, this red angle is big, and this blue angle is small.
Now, the, at the beginning of section 6.3, there are two useful theorems presented. We didn't need them in the previous video, uh, but we will use them in this video, or, or you might use them in justifying some of the things that come up in this video. Now, I won't discuss the proofs of these theorems because the proofs only use concepts from chapters 3 and 5. In fact, these theorems could have been introduced back in those chapters. It might have made more sense. But uh, the authors uh, either forgot to do it in those earlier chapters or just decided to, to put them here where they're needed. Um, if they had been put in chapters 3 and 5, those chapters would have been even longer than they were. So theorem um, 6.3.1 and theorem 6.3.2 are both stated in the book as if and only if theorems. Uh, I prefer stating theorems, theorems like this as equivalent uh, theorems, saying that uh, certain um, collections of statements are equivalent. So theorem 6.3.1 says that these two statements are equivalent, statements 1 and 2. Statement 1 is illustrated here. Statement 1 says that I have a, a line segment AB that's shorter than a line segment CD. Statement 2 is over here, illustrated over here. That statement says there exists a point G on the interior of segment CD such that segment CG is congruent to segment AB. So this theorem says that these two statements are equivalent, or as the book would say, statement one is true if and only if statement two is true. So these two statements are either both true or they're both false. Theorem 6.3.2 is another equivalence theorem. Uh, statement one is illustrated here on the left. It says that you have two angles, one of them is smaller than the other. Uh, statement 2 is illustrated over here on the right. It says that uh, there exists a point G in the interior of this angle, DEF, such that angle DEG is congruent to angle ABC. So these two theorems are, are very similar in the sorts of things that they say. They're, they're about bigger and smaller angles, or short, uh, longer and shorter segments, but they say the same sorts of things about those objects. All right, so uh, here's our first cool consequence of the neutral exterior angle theorem, the side angle angle theorem. Now remember that uh, earlier in the, in the course, earlier in the book, um, we discussed sort of desirable uh, triangle uh, congruence behavior, uh, side angle side congruence, angle side angle congruence, side 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 congruence, and side angle angle congruence. Those are all things that we're used to seeing happen in drawings, and uh, it was uh, we wondered if if uh, those would all be true in a protractor geometry, and we observed that they're not necessarily true in a protractor geometry. We drew an example of a triangle in the, uh, the taxicab plane, for instance, where, um, where the side angle side congruence behavior was not true. So we knew that we would have to add an axiom to create a geometry that had that kind of behavior guaranteed. So the question was, how many axioms would we need? Would we, would we need to add all four of those axioms? Well, it turned out that we only needed to add one axiom. We added the side angle side axiom to the axioms for protractor geometry, creating a new geometry called neutral geometry. And I pointed out that um, what would be coming would, was that we would prove that all of that other desirable triangle congruence behavior would automatically be true. We would prove that in theorems. So in previous sections of the book, we proved the angle side angle theorem, that is we prove that every neutral geometry, every geometry that satisfies the side angle side axiom will also satisfy the angle side angle axiom. And we prove the side 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 theorem, which says that uh, in every protractor geometry that satisfies the angle side angle axiom, that is in every neutral geometry, the side 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 congruence behavior is obeyed. And so here's our last of those uh, triangle congruence theorems the uh, 
the, the last of that collection that I discussed before. It's the side angle angle axiom. It says uh, in, uh, in a neutral geometry, if you have a correspondence between parts of two triangles such that um, two angles, so maybe that red angle and that red angle, uh, and maybe that blue angle and that blue angle are congruent, and also a non-included side on each triangle is congruent. So this is a, the, the side that is not the side between those two angles. If those three um, parts of um, corresponding parts of the triangles are, are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Now, I'm not going to go over this proof uh, in detail. Uh, this is sort of an, an adaptation of the book's proof, but I, I do it a little bit differently. Um, one thing that I do is in this step six, I say that there are three possibilities for where the point G can be on ray DF. These are the three possibilities. Possibility one, or two, or three. Now, as we've discussed uh, throughout this course, any time in a proof you can articulate an OR statement, then you're set up for doing a proof by cases. So in the next step, we start doing cases. Case 1, case 2. Well, it turns out that case 1 will turn out to be impossible. And case 2 will also turn out to be impossible. So since those two cases are impossible, we know that uh, the only case that's left is case 3. We don't even have to uh, uh, think about case 3. It's just the only thing left standing. So uh, that's how this proof unfolds. It, again, is the same um, idea as the book's proof, but I, I find the book's proof a little bit confusing. So again, that's the first cool consequence of the neutral exterior angle theorem, the side angle angle congruence theorem. The second cool consequence is the BS arrow BA theorem. It says uh, in neutral geometry, if you have um, one side of a triangle that's big and another side of a triangle that's of the same triangle that's small, then the angles opposite those two sides have the same relationship. So opposite that bigger side is the bigger angle. Now, there's a very nice uh, proof of this theorem that uses only eight steps. Now, I've mentioned that uh, this video is, is about cool consequences of the neutral exterior angle theorem. So you should expect that somewhere in this proof, that neutral exterior angle theorem is going to be used. But I'm not going to tell you where. Um, it's, it's in here somewhere. I do have some hints. Uh, about what to use to justify some of these steps. But you'll understand this theorem much better if you go through it, you make the illustrations, and you do the justifications. The third consequence of the neutral exterior angle theorem that we'll discuss is the BA arrow BS theorem. Now, let's collect ourselves here. Let's take stock of what we have so far. At the beginning of this video, I reviewed theorems that we had coming into this section. We had the CS arrow CA theorem, also called the isosceles triangle theorem, or in the book they call it the Pons Asinorum theorem, from section 6.1. We had um, the CA arrow CS theorem from section 6.2. And then uh, from this section we just discussed, now, the BS arrow BA theorem. Now, those earlier theorems were proven sort of from scratch. Theorem, uh, the CS arrow CA theorem, had a, pl a clever proof involving side angle side. Uh, the uh, CA arrow CS theorem had a clever proof involving angle side angle. And this uh, third theorem um, that was just discussed on the previous page had a proof involving many steps, eight steps. Invol and, and somewhere it used the neutral exterior angle theorem. So, so um, those theorems all in involved either some cleverness or a bunch of steps. 
Now, it's not surprising that we would have this fourth theorem, BA or OBS, to add to this collection. So that theorem will, will add to this collection. It's not surprising that there would be such a theorem. But what is cool is that this theorem um, can be proved very simply by just making clever use of uh, these two theorems, this theorem and this theorem, that are already proven. In fact, the, the proof is so simple that this new theorem, the, the BA arrow BS theorem, I think ought to just be called a corollary of those two theorems. It's so simple to prove this blue one. But the, the proof's simplicity uh, comes from a clever observation that we can prove the contrapositive version of this theorem that we want to prove. BA arrow BS is what we want to prove. We're going to prove the contrapositive, which is uh, not BS arrow not BA. So I'll say more about that on the next page. So uh, in order to uh, state the contrapositive in a, in a form that's uh, convenient to use in a, in a proof, I'm going to state the, uh, the original theorem with vertices named. So here is that original um, BA arrow BS theorem. It says, in a given triangle, if you have one angle that's bigger than another angle, then uh, the opposite side of the big angle is bigger than the opposite side of the, the small angle. So if we think about hypothesis and conclusion, we have if hypothesis, we have a bigger angle, then conclusion, we have a bigger side. Well, the contrapositive is we take the negation of the red statement and we put it here. So this is negation of AB greater than AC. So we just simply say AB is not greater than AC. And here we see that we have the negation of that. So this is the negation of Uh, measure of angle AB, ACB is greater than the measure of angle ABC. So we just simply built the contrapositive. And again, it helped to have the vertices named. All right, well, let's do the proof of the contrapositive. So we're going to start by saying, uh, suppose we have a triangle where AB is not greater than AC. Well, we can articulate uh, an OR statement. If AB is not greater than AC, well then either AB is equal to AC or AC is greater than AB. There are those two cases coming up. So here's the first case. The first case is when AB is equal to AC. Well look, if AB is equal to AC, that is these two uh, segments have the same length, that means these two segments are congruent. And by the CS arrow CA theorem, that tells us that these opposite angles are congruent. So now we know that these opposite angles are congruent. Since those opposite angles are congruent, this is the case. One is not bigger than the other. So we've proven that this is correct in this case one of the angles is not bigger than the other. Now let's look at the second case, the case where AC is greater than AB. So we uh, suppose we have a triangle where AC is greater than AB. Well, here we have a triangle where AC is bigger than AB, and we can apply the BS arrow BA theorem since this red angle is bigger than this green, I'm sorry, since this red side is the bigger side, this red angle is the bigger angle. So look carefully, notice that angle ABC is bigger than angle ACB. Well, since that's true, 
then it's true that ACB is not bigger than ABC. It's the other way around. So this inequality is correct in this case as well. So in both cases, this inequality is true. It's true in every case. So you see, we didn't have to really prove anything new. We just observed that the thing that we're trying to prove Uh, this contrapositive uh, consisted of two cases, and in each of those cases, one of our previous theorems applied directly. So I think that's a wonderful uh, example of uh, the, the benefit of keeping your eyes open for um, theorems where the contrapositive might be easier to prove than the original. I just think this is a wonderful proof. The third consequence of the neutral exterior angle theorem is this, the triangle inequality. And I think this should be called the triangle inequality of neutral geometry. Here's the version without vertices named. It, uh, it says, in neutral geometry, the length of one side of a triangle is strictly less than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. So in this diagram, this, uh, uh, the length of this red side is strictly less than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. Well, here's a, a proof uh, without illustrations or justifications. Now, for this proof to, to uh, be something that I can write down in words, it, it helps to label the vertices. So here's our, our, our objective. We want to prove that, uh, you know, suppose that a triangle is given and one of the sides of the triangle has been given has been chosen. Well, uh, our goal is to prove that the length of that side is strictly less than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. But none of these things have names, so it's kind of awkward to talk about them. So at this point, we just have the liberty of, of making up names. We're going to label the vertices of the triangle ABC so that AB is the chosen side. Now, here is a nice proof that goes on and proves uh, that the length of that chosen side, uh, AB, oops, this, uh, this should say AC is the chosen side. So we're going to choose uh, to label our triangle with vertices ABC so that this chosen side is the one that gets called AC. And our goal then is to prove that AC is less than AB plus BC. So here's a proof that ends by saying AC is less than um, CB plus AB. Now I'll let you uh, study this proof, uh, make illustrations for each step and uh, justifications. This is very similar to the, to the book's proof. Well, that's it. The, uh, the collection of four cool consequences. We had the side angle angle theorem, the BS arrow BA theorem, the BA arrow BS theorem, and the triangle inequality for neutral geometry. Four consequences of the neutral exterior angle theorem. That's the end of the video. Thank you.